Greetings in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. Happy to see you all after a week. And happy to know that we are enjoying the immense blessings of our Lord Jesus Christ. Today, we are here to discuss the next lesson, chapter 12. The title of this chapter is Salt of the Earth and Light of the World. Let us begin with a prayer. Please rise and fold your hands, close your eyes. Father Almighty, thank you for this beautiful day. We thank you for this beautiful time that you have given us to learn more about you. Lord, help us to understand the divine wisdom. Help us to gain knowledge, the in-depth knowledge of how you wish your children to be. Help us in our efforts to become your children and to lead a true Christian life. Holy Spirit, please guide us through. Mother Mary, please intercede for us sinners to your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. As I said in the beginning, today we are moving on to chapter 12. And this chapter has the significance that happily we have reached the last lesson of your syllabus. If you look at your catechism textbook, we know that we have been following the series of textbooks prescribed by the Zero Malabar Catechesis entitled On the Path of Salvation. And the name of your text is Christian Life in Church and Society. So if you look at the lessons that we have come through, the 12 lessons till today, what we have learned, it is beautifully designed to teach you how to develop the qualities, the Christian qualities, be like Christ, and how to live a true Christian life in the society. So we began with an in-depth understanding about the personality of our master, Lord Jesus Christ, and then we learned how to train ourselves, to groom ourselves, to develop our personality, to be matching with that of Lord Jesus Christ. And then we learned to understand what is a true Christian conscience. And then we moved forward to understand various life attributes, which we need to know, we need to practice in our lives to develop our spirituality and to develop as a socially responsible human being. In this effort, we have studied in a great deal to address various contexts that we need to deal with when we are in a society. We need to deal with our brother. In this context, we have learned in depth how to be a true follower of Christ and to lead a meaningful and a life of a role model and to be called as a true Christian. So in today's chapter, we will see what does it mean by salt of the earth and light of the world. First, let us have a look at the great teacher the best teacher of all the times, you know whom I mention here, none other than our master, Lord Jesus Christ. He is the teacher of all teachers, the best of all teachers in the world who could explain the most complicated and the most serious concepts in the most simple and understandable manner to a very uneducated common man. That is the beauty of Jesus' teachings. He taught 
with authority. People used to exclaim, listening to him teaching, he is a Nazarene. He is the son of a carpenter. How does he know so much to teach the people like this? And here comes the importance, the highlight of the quality of Jesus' teaching that he taught with authority. And later in a portion we read that Jesus himself says, the authority has been given to me from the heaven, from my father. So Jesus, he proclaimed the word, he proclaimed the good news to the common men so that the common men could understand the divine wisdom in the most simple and easy manner. So when you go through the gospel, we can see that Jesus teaching and preaching on the street, on the mountain, on the seashore, in the synagogues and so on. And we see that the quintessence of Jesus teaching can be concised in the form of eight verses in St. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 5, verses 13, we read the Beatitudes. The eight Beatitudes are as follows. He calls eight categories of people as blessed. Jesus says, blessed are those who are poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall gain comfort. Blessed are the meek, for they shall, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are the one who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the ones who are pure at heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the ones who are peacemakers on earth, for they are called the children of God. Blessed are the ones who strive for righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. The eight Beatitudes, Jesus calls eight categories of people as blessed. And he says, these are the people who are the owners of the kingdom of God. These are the people who are called the children of God. So he clearly says how each one of us be, the disciples of Jesus be, to live as the children of God and to gain the eternal glory. So after narrating these, Jesus gives a simile, a comparison he tells his disciples, be like salt of the earth and light of the world. Let us have a look into the verses that reads this. You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built, set on a hill, can't be hid. No one, after lighting lamp, puts it under the bushel basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. So let us examine what is the significance of these two comparisons, be like salt of the earth and be like light of the world. The first point, salt of the earth. Where do we come across the importance of salt in the Holy Bible? Yes, we can read it right from the Old Testament. 
God says in the book of Leviticus chapter 2 verse 13 we read you shall not omit from your grain offerings the salt of the covenant with your God with all your offerings you shall offer salt salt signifies certain very important qualities and characteristics that one should possess what are the characteristics of salt first it adds taste to the food without salt no matter how much ever spices we have added into the food no matter in which method we have prepared a particular dish but without salt we know it is worthless so it adds taste to the food the first point the second point is the salt preserves food and the third point is the salt purifies so the three major qualities of salt it adds taste in other words you can say that it adds meaning secondly it preserves and thirdly it purifies so in the first context salt adds taste so how do you compare this with the christian life here the saltiness refers to the goodness the virtues that we as a christian should possess and i would say the mother of all virtues is the quality or the emotion that we call love jesus himself said love one another as i have loved you when you love each other people will know that you are my disciples people will know that you are the children of god so what is essential to be called as children of god is to love and what is love yes we read in the first corinthians chapter 13 verse 1 onwards we have seen it in chapter 8 also when we discussed in chapter 8 about love the different aspects of love love is patient love is kind love is not jealous love does not envy it does not boast it is not proud it is not selfish it does not delight in evil but it takes happiness in truth it protects it preserves it hopes that is love so in other words we we can say that to have saltiness in our lives it simply implies we should have the love within us the love of god that flow towards our brethren in the form of any activity any care that we do for our fellow being all our deeds all our actions should be filled with the love of god this is the meaning of adding taste to your life a christian life the taste of the christian life is love and we know we have the epitome of love jesus christ who has died on the cross out of his love for the human beings when we talk about the jesus personality we say yes he can be called god and he can be called a man at the same time he is the son of god he is the son of man in everything except the matter of sin he was like any one of us so he himself depicted how much a person can sacrifice how much a person can care for how much a person can have a concern for the fellow being around us learn from him the second quality the salt preserves yes we need to preserve we need to uphold the virtues that we have gained that we have developed that we have been born with and use it for the goodness of others it simply means that we should not be carried away by wrong philosophies we should not be carried away by false doctrines and we should not become prey for someone's 
ill plants, the salt preserves. We should preserve our quality as a Christian. The third point, salt purifies. We as a Christian, we should purify or we should be able to recognize the ills and evils that could happen in a society and we should be able to correct our fellow brothers and sisters, show them the right path, help them, encourage them to attain the righteousness. So, as a sincere follower of Christ, we must protect and preserve our qualities and encourage our fellow beings to live a life free of sins and social evils. Let us discuss the remaining part of this topic, Light of the World, in the next class.